it reminded me of Attack on Titan at the start yes. when you've got like the underdogs of people, they're trying to just use their own like, you know, EDM gear kind of thing. They're trying to fight in their own, only way. <laughs> <laughs> they're all just like vibing just, in this hell. <laughs> <laughs> just vibing. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, 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 and welcome back to Gateway to Anime. How are you all? What's going on? We are the podcast where we try and throw open the gates to anime, whether you're a new fan, a returning fan, or an anime veteran. Ever wanted to get into anime but didn't know where to start? We are the podcast for you, but if you are a grizzled old veteran like we are, we'll accommodate you as well. We're doing a lot here at Gateway to Anime. Now, just some housekeeping before we start. If you are a podcast listener, please head to one of Spotify and or Apple Podcasts, leave us a five-star review. Really does help. I know every podcast asks for it, but it really does make a difference. You can also check us out on our social media platforms, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, which you are hopefully watching us on. You can also find us on our website, www.gatewaytoanime.com. Also now, if you want to get on our Patreon, we are doing extra episodes, a spin-off style version of the topic we're talking about, plus early releases, plus behind the scenes footage. So if you really like what we're doing, check us out on Patreon. Anyway, Charlie, how you going? Good, good. Happy to be here. Happy to be talking about some uh, large topics. <laughs> but um, Scram, how are you, mate? Ready to crash through a city and kaijus. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, there it is, yes. We are doing kaiju anime so big topic big topic but again a little bit like when we did the samurai ninja episode not as many like specifically just pure kaiju shows as you think but lots of mix and mashing lots of genre mashings lots of elements of this across so many different shows and of course you can't really talk about kaiju without talking about mecha, even though often they do delineate, but sometimes they go hand in hand and it's all comes from sort of the same place, which we'll talk about. But Charlie, you recently saw a film starring the most famous kaiju of them all. Godzilla, minus one. Uh, Shout out to Sugoi Kai, by the way, for bringing that film out to Australia. Appreciate it, Sly. Excellent work. It was like one of my favorite movies I saw of last year. Like it, it's one of the best movies of 2023. And I'm not alone in that. Like uh, it is was so well received. It's like just how you do an incredible blockbuster. I didn't see Shin Godzilla. So it's a good film. yeah, people yeah. like that a lot it's a good too. Film. But I it's interesting because my kind of uh, my introduction to Godzilla was that Matthew Broderick Godzilla. Um, <laughs> the worst one. So I was sort of like Godzilla, like, well, I didn't really think much about it, but um, this film is is so beautifully done. It's um set after the war, set after World War Two. Follows like a kamikaze pilot who survived the war, didn't end up doing his duties, which is like a thing if he feels kind of like a bit of a it's like his whole guilt complex and how they handle dealing with this next threat or how like yeah Tokyo handles Godzilla. And mm. honestly, it is beautiful it's stunning it's a very anti-war film it's probably i'd say arguably like we had oppenheimer come out last year right and everyone were talking about the literal creation of the a-bomb this is i think a more nuanced look at and it's a more of an anti-war anti-conflict film i think it actually has more of a nuanced look at that i think it's really fantastic a very special movie great acting great effects and this is what we love and we'll talk about this what we love. so kaiju we should probably tell people what kaiju is because <laughs> i think some people might actually not know basically kaiju is as i saying godzilla king kong it's a big over, like a monster that is coming. That's like an overwhelming force that is coming towards you. And it's just like giant monsters, basically. So you could argue that like Attack on Titan is kind of a kaiju, In right? In many ways, it's a kaiju. Also kind of a mecha show. Yeah. Flesh mechas. 100%. Uh, mechas. That's Flesh weird. Mecha. I mean, wasn't expecting to say that term today, but... Um, <laughs> there you go. There we go. And just to piggyback off that, Charlie. So yeah, kaiju essentially translates to strange beast. And yeah, it's a Japanese media genre involving giant monsters, as we know. 
But the word kaiju can refer to the giant monsters themselves, which are usually depicted attacking major cities, the military, or other monsters. But it was actually originally a subgenre of tokusatsu, which means special photography. And it's a Japanese term for live action films that utilize practical and special effects. Mm. Popularized during the first monster boom, there was a monster boom in 66 and 68 in Japan in particular. But the first of its kind, you've already mentioned him, was King Kong. Mm -hmm. That was the first official, like, giant monster, which, of course, in Japan turned into the kaiju genre. But that came out in 1933. Mm. It's old, eh? Like, Is King everyone... Kong Japanese? No. no I was no, going to say, no. no. It was America. originated in America. America, yeah, America. yeah, yeah. That's what no, I'm saying. I was like, so confused. I was like, it's no, not a kaiju. Like, like, it's the first the giant monster film of them all. And from that, the kaiju genre spun. But also, of course, there's much to do with, of course, the nuclear weapon attack and whatnot, of course. We'll talk about that later. We don't need to dive too deep into that, but obviously it's a way of coming to terms with a horrible thing that happened. Of course, in some of the Godzilla films, he's either been awoken by the nuclear weapon or has been a lizard exposed to radiation. And of course, you know, the unstoppable force of technology or the consequences of using technology coming back to haunt us. Mm. And Japan obviously has an incredible history to do with how fast they modernized. And the constant, you see the Miyazaki work all the time, the constant push and pull between the more Shinto belief of the sort of more natural way of living versus the incredibly fast modernity. Because during the major restoration, Japan modernized so fast to literally be neck and neck with some of the world's major powers up to World War II. Crazy stuff. You know, the history of Japan is extraordinary. And the kaiju genre is, of course born out of all of that we're not going to get to we're not going to turn this into a history podcast because there's too much and i'm not we're not going to be able to contextualize it well enough to do that but just of course we'll pepper it in and out because it's essential to the genre right but yeah so in 1954 godzilla commonly regarded as the first kaiju film so obviously the first big monster film king kong but in 54 godzilla uh as a metaphor for nuclear weapons you know basically he destroys cities and Ooh. all these kaijus are doing that. And some of the other ones we haven't mentioned yet, Rodan, Mothra, mm. King Ghidorah. King Ghidorah. And, Ga boy. and uh, Gamera. <laughs> yep. Gamera, they're the other. Lots of the ones that Godzilla fights. Yeah. A lot of the time. Mecha Godzilla. Mecha Godzilla, yeah. all yeah, kind of stuff. Things. But yeah, and obviously a lot of them come from Japanese legends. What about Attack of the 50-Foot Woman? Well, I mean, again, it's like because, and of course, also. Jack and the Beanstalk is a kaiju. Is he a giant kind coming of. down and stomps all over the town? Yeah. Does he come down? Does he come he down? He falls off the beanstalk, right? Yeah, sorry, I'm thinking of Into the Woods, down. the beloved Broadway musical. <laughs> By Stephen Sondheim. By Stephen Sondheim. <laughs> a kaiju musical. <laughs> a kaiju musical by I mean, Stephen hey, Sondheim. I mean, hey, yeah. King Kong is also a musical. So That's true. <laughs> kaiju musicals, heard it here first. There's probably, I would be willing to bet money there is a Godzilla musical. There is, yes. There you go. Yeah. Wait, yeah. <laughs> I just said that factually without knowing that. I, just, I would just be. I just so that. strongly assume that that is the case that I said it with authority. Someone's going to come for me. There may be not, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was. Yes, even but, sometimes um, into the woods as a kaiju musical is, is a wild take that I just said. That that is wild. There you go. But, um, yeah, because also they're not always antagonistic. The kaiju sometimes they're like pro sometimes they join with the protagonist to fight another kaiju. Yeah, you know, yeah. obviously we've got Kong versus Godzilla, where we've got the melding. But again, we mentioned this many times before. But obviously, with the melding of cultures between Japan and America after the occupation post World War Two, I mean, King Kong came out earlier, obviously than that. Initially, Osama Tezuka and many others were inspired by Mickey Mouse and whatnot. There's been a real interesting melding of cultural ideas between mm. the US and Japan for a long time, you know, and it's very interesting. So this is funny how it sort of came out. But then of course, I think obviously post World War Two and, and the nuclear attack, they managed to really make it their own and have its own very heavy thematic symbols, you know, compared to the US. But Attack of the Fifty Foot Woman, again, it's it is a kaiju thing, but obviously it's a it's a giant monster. But again, that term can be used, I suppose, liberally it doesn't necessarily just have to be when we say kaiju, we're talking about Japanese Monster films. Yeah, That's women, what we're talking about. women are and monsters. So. Yeah, the true evil. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, that was a terrible joke. What was it? That was good? a great joke. Um, what was it good? Who knows? So I'm just going to quickly finish my thought on the Godzilla movie. Please. Because one thing that I think is the strength of the kaiju genre, and this comes into a lot of the animes we're going to talk about as well, what I love about it is that in this particular film and in all, a lot of these, like there's no technology that can really take down this monster yeah. people have to group together to work together to make like an orchestrated effect and yes. in this 
Godzilla movie in minus one, the way they do that is incredible. Like the way that they kind of think outside the box to try and like work together. And it reminded me of when I loved Attack on Titan at the start, yes. when you've got like the underdogs of people, they're trying to just use their own like, you know, EDM gear kind of thing. They're trying to fight in their own, only way. <laughs> They're all just like vibing in this hell. <laughs> <laughs> just vibing. Like, ah, ah, ah. Well, get deep. <laughs> wow. Honestly. Distract him with the glow sticks. <laughs> that was a missed opportunity for the scouts. That was a missed opportunity. <laughs> Blasting that shit while they're using Man, their I was, EDM. I reckon I could. ODM gear. I feel like I would see Captain Levi at a Marrickville rave. Oh, 100%. Uh, I'd, I'd He'd clean up. Yeah, I'd see him 100%. there. Yeah. yeah. Good for him. Um, ah, sorry about He killed that. it with ecstasy. <laughs> 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 he can't do all these Pendulum flips anymore. <laughs> well, okay, so that was embarrassing. <laughs> ODM gear. Yeah. I prefer yeah. ODM gear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Don't we all? So, yes, they're using their ODM gear, which is like the best that those little guys can do. You know? By little guys, I mean human beings. Human beings. <laughs> um, and... I like that kind of camaraderie coming together, like the little guy defeating the big monster against all odds, yeah, that, that working together and under the boot, all that kind of stuff. Big fan of that. And I mean, that's when Attack on Titan kind of loses its way. He's laughing about EDM. It's gone. Well, EDM it's has it, killed him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Continue. I'll get this one. <laughs> Just uh, fucking uh, sandstorm by Darude. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm sure someone's edited Captain Levi to that at I'm some sure. point. I'm sure. Oh. Please do if you haven't. More like Lincoln Park is more the AMB That's vibe, more, yeah. Which is not EDM. <laughs> no. Unfortunately. Just, <laughs> just Lincoln just Park. Let me all know that's the, we know that it's not. <laughs> we know that it's not. We know that it's not. I don't want the EDM stands to come for oh, We've got enough stands coming for us. <laughs> <I hate laughs> um, okay. So, yes. Uh, and Attack on Titan to me is a kaiju show. It is. At the start. It's, you know, that cosmic horror kind of thing. Another famous one. We're talking about Evangelion. Of course. Which definitely is a kaiju because the angels, you know. Yep. They're coming from space. Yep. <laughs> they're coming down and they're Absolutely. big. Yeah, yeah. And you got to get in the Mecca to fight them. Shinji's got to get in the Mecca. Get in there, you son of a bitch. Um, yeah, yeah, so the reason Mecca is so close to it is I think that the, other, the flip side of what I said about people banding together with, like, rope and stuff, you know, to make it, to take down Godzilla or whatever, um, the opposite is they use technology. So they make Mecha suits that are designed to fight these monsters. So it's yes. kind of like that's the other flip side, which is where the Mecha kind of comes in. It's also so fascinating, especially just still sort of coming off the back of this Godzilla minus one, is that also it's very much utilizing the idea of the Confucian belief system where that the greater sum of all the parts are more than the individual. So obviously the big thing about Western culture is very individualistic, nothing more, you know, seen than the American culture, right? And, you know, Judeo-Christian very much praises that of the individual. But Confucianism, it's all about the society of a whole. It's all about the collective, right? And as a result, and it's interesting that the lead character in Godzilla is a kamikaze pilot because it also recontextualizes, like, you, you look at that from, like, you know, if you read, you know, obviously history books are written by the winners and you're like, Kamikaze Pilots, what a crazy thing to be doing. It's like, well, if you look at it through the lens of Confucianism and more of the like, well, someone actually trying to do something to help the whole, the individual is smaller than the yeah. greater sum of the parts. I'm not trying to say it's a, you know, that's not a great thing to be doing, no, but it's mo- just the fascinating. Movie, the movie actually makes a huge point of criticizing that. Yeah, of so course. So that's the thing. It's like the movie actually is a huge, like, it's a very anti government um, anti-warfare anti-japanese government and military and anti-american military just all and like the you know anti the war basically and how what it means to fight there's like a line in it where it's like we've sent our people off to die too often like and the government hasn't cared about people dying and now it's time to care about that like that was a terrible botched version of a really what was really a beautiful moving line I recommend you go see it. Uh, and don't do what I did and start calling it Minus One Godzilla because it just sounds like there's no Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like Minus One Godzilla. And I'm the like, so there's no... <laughs> there's, it's fine. There's, it's a very... It's a slice of life um, <laughs> with no Godzilla. No Godzilla. No Godzilla. <laughs> the reason we're... Like, so we haven't... Again, like we've only talked about anime briefly in this episode because there's not that many. I mean, there is an animated Godzilla. 
There is. Yes. Yeah, there but is. it's not one that's like a particular classic that we talk about that often. Like obviously there's just so much media and it's not the most famous form of Godzilla. But uh, there is one coming out. The most famous like kaiju manga is being adapted and it's coming out this year, right? And mm. Graham, you're, you're a fan of this also. You're you want to talk us through it? Talks I it. love this manga. Uh, I've been reading this for... Since it came out, it originally came out on Jump Plus, which I spoke about at Nauseam, which is the online version of the Shonen Jump magazine. You can download the app. It costs nothing. It's like $2 Australian. You get all the manga in the world. It's on there. It's fantastic. But yes, the the anime is called Kaiju Number 8. And I'll, I'll give you a little synopsis. Godzilla-like monsters called Kaijus have been appearing around Japan for many years. To combat the beasts, an elite unit known as the Defense Corps risks their lives on a daily basis to protect the civilians. Once a creature is killed, sweepers working under the professional kaiju cleaning corporation are left to dispose of the remains. The main character, Kafka Habina, who is such a good character, uh, a 32-year-old man is unsatisfied with his job as a sweeper. From a young age, he has aspired to, j- to join the defense forces and killing kaijus for a living. After a few failed attempts, however, he gave up on his dreams and resigned himself to the mediocrity that provided a decent paycheck. Nevertheless, when an ambitious 18-year-old recruit named Leo Ichikawa, oh, that was a hard one, joins his cleaning team, Kafka is once again reminded of his desire to join the military. Following a chain of unfortunate events and an interaction with a junior sweeper, Kafka encounters a parasitic type of kaiju that forces its way into his mouth, turning him into a humanoid monster. With his newfound powers, Kafka aims to join his lifelong dream, ambition of defining the defense force. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's fantastic. Coming out this year, 2024. It is coming out. Can't remember who the studio is. But it looks really good. It's a big one. A new uh, trailer just dropped recently, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Check out. Uh, it's been developed by Production IG. Can't remember anything they've done off the top of my head, but I'm sure you can. Uh, Q. Oh, yeah, Q. Psychopaths. Psychopaths. All sorts of things. Food huge, Wars, huge. I'm pretty certain. I think you are correct. They've done um, many, many things. Like one of the biggest studios. One of the big boys. In fact, Studio Wit is a subsidiary of Production IG. Oh, okay. Or was. Um, I'm not sure if it still is. I have to check that. But yeah. The manga is really fun. The defense force is really cool. Like every character is like really well designed. They're all like really hot characters as well. You'll have a sleepy teacher stuff and all these sort of tropes well, as well. Well, thank fucking God for that. <laughs> <laughs> but, I was going to you know, say there wasn't one in Godzilla, but there actually was. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Ticks all across the page. All the boxes. <laughs> yeah, and they've got like combat suits that release their inert fighting power and stuff like that. So there's like little power systems here and there. Nice. They all have like weapons that are made from like different kaijus and stuff that have special Tokyo abilities a little bit of that but there's also that little bit of like bleachism to it where they've got like different squads and different captains and the captains have their own like sort of way of doing uh, things it's sign okay. me up yeah you got yeah. me yeah. you said this on the podcast like, before but i mean any fucking captain system like any <laughs> kind of rank yeah. like if there's an exam even better like just yeah it's is this good. the show you're most excited for this year? Yeah, of course. All right. Yep. Like, it, it takes all the tropes I want. Yep. You know, you've got the, you know, the Sundare character. Mm-hmm. You know, Kafka himself is actually, a, you know, is a 32-year-old man. Right. He's not a high school student. That's he's not cool. not a child. Like, it's, Are the know, supporting characters also adults? They're yeah. all, like, yeah, they're all 18 and above. Good, good, good. Okay, yeah. this is- the- I think there's maybe one that's, like, 14, but everyone else is like ex military, ex this. Yeah. Da, 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 so. This sounds amazing. That's it's all I want. Great. Well, it's been like, highly regarded for a long time in yeah. the manga world, hasn't it? Yeah. And, you know, it gives you action, big kaiju monsters, big weapons, you know. Is it ongoing or is it finished? It's still going. Yep. Still going. Um, don't think there's any sign of it slowing down. Comes from the same. This, I can't remember who the mangaka was, but it's the guy who wrote this is, you know, his team he worked with went on to do. Dan to Dan, Hell's Paradise. Oh, shit. And stuff like that. They all come from the same sort of Crew, lineage, right. which I right. should have researched. Um, just, a that's cool, interesting. just a cool group of people. That's just a cool. Yeah. And obviously, Jujutsu Kaisen's in the same. Yeah, there's Katami's a group of like too, five right. of them that worked under someone else. Oh, wow. And they've all, they all do like really good work. So interesting. I'm super excited. And it's, you know, it's fighting giant monsters. Yeah. Who doesn't love that? It's sick. 
Amazing. Because, I, yeah, I, I think that sounds like, I mean, it's kaijus in the name. So, you know, yeah. it's like one <laughs> it's that about is like. It will be the kaiju. It's the one. as it gets for us, yeah, yeah. Is in the so. kaiju world. But what else again, is considered kaiju, though? Well, it's hard because, I mean, Neon Genesis, obviously, mm. yeah. is, but like it's Mecha and Kaiju together at last, you know, which are on many. But, like, again, it's elements. There's so many different, like, giant monster elements. Solo leveling has elements of kaiju but it's not a kaiju show yeah this just takes elements of it but he like, will fight dragons and stuff later on but mm, but as far as like the un you know because you mentioned before like godzilla he's like a preternatural force you know what i mean yeah. so you can't it's existential you can't stop it you know it's is not it more like, prevalent in like live action because i'm thinking like it is much super more. sentai and yeah it's it's, it's, it's actually Rangers. way more of a of a tokusatsu thing uh, right okay, so yeah. it doesn't actually come into manga and anime as much as you'd think again it's a bit like yeah as i mentioned before the samurai we were like what where are these things like mm. yeah and i guess it has to fit a certain because there's lots of like pure mecha that's about like giant mechas but they're probably yes. not considered kaiju because it's no like they have to be an or like a living organism right is that how it well is? again there's there's different levels of mecha but like the kaiju has to be yes but like yeah yeah so but again the, the, well there's three subcategories right so this is sort of where it varies so kaijin which sort of translates to strange person uh, refers to distorted human beings or humanoid-like creatures. So origin of kaiju going back to the 20th century literature, starting with Edogawa Rampo's 1936 novel, The Fiend with 20 Faces, featured a master detective whose nemesis was a fiend, a mysterious monster of disguise, whose real face was unknown. Kind of a Moriarty to Sherlock type thing. But this caught the public's attention and many other Japanese media took on the mantle of kaijin. So not an offshoot of kaiju, but kaijin used a lot in sci-fi and superhero shows like Kamen Rider series and the Super Sentai programs. Mm -hmm. That's sort of a more of a kaijin, like human, human monster hybrid. Mm -hmm. And there's Dai Kaiju, which is giant kaiju or great kaiju. That's Godzilla and Maharaga and um, sorry, Gamera, Ghidorah, all those. They're all Kong. They're Dai Kaiju. Right. Then this one gets us a bit more into Neon Genesis. This is Seijin, star people. So they appear within Japanese words for extraterrestrial aliens. Uh, ke Kesaijin, which means Martian. And uh, aliens also be called uh, Yuchujin, which means spaceman. So the Ultraman series was popular and also, of course, Neon Genesis. Ultraman. So that's yeah, where right. we're getting into the Seijin sort of True. subcategory of Kaiju. I mean, sorry to jump back to Attack on Titan, but obviously the name Titan yeah. is, is Titan kaiju, uh, yeah. kaiju, right? Like yeah. the, the okay. Titan gods who are like yeah. you know, the biggest like- Norse global. mythology, of course, yeah, heavily, heavily taken from. The more you know. But yeah, uh, it's, it's really interesting. Cause yeah, I mean, literally they pilot those things yeah. as Mecha in many ways, but they're also giant monsters, existential threats. Well, they start off as such existential threats with no way to properly combat them unless you're listening to EDM intensely. It is. And like that's <laughs> the only way to combat I think, them. <laughs> I think because like um, Garen Lagan is like, they they get mm. so big that they're yeah. ju bigger than planets. Yes. Um, but they're two mechas. So it's yeah, not, mecha it doesn't show. really count. That's it's just like pure, pure mecha. mecha. Yeah. Huh. But there's also subcategories of mecha. Like there's the living mecha. There's like those those that you like must like sort of biologically meld with. There's what those you just purely pilot. There's those which like kind of you're in between. You know, Isn't so it's darling in the Franks where you have to like touch their butt. And yeah, like, oh, God, I forgot about darling good. in the Franks. Why did that happen? No one. Does. I don't. You know what? I don't even. Know. But, um, I hate it. I hate it here. But I've actually got a quote here from uh, from an intellectual called Ron Tanners who, in, this is in respect to Neon Genesis, but it describes Japan's post-war culture as, quote, having been built on the unflagging belief in the benefit of all things high-tech. So many mecha sci-fi anime subvert that idea and present the existential horror associated. So they tend to be bleaker stories. So obviously, like, Neon Genesis is a perfect example of unending bleak horror, Attack on Titan, same thing, Godzilla. All of these. Kaiju number eight sounds interesting. I'm not sure. Is, is it bleak story or is it like a little bit more? It is, but it's also that anime thing of like, we will band together and we will overcome. And Again, same thing. We yeah. will fight to the last man. Type yes. thing. So bleak, but you know. Yeah, but I guess they all kind of have in the end. Yeah. You know? Again, it's that they're very much the society coming together. Yeah. Greater than the sum of its parts. You totally. Know, society over the individual. But it's, but yeah, they're also very much anti-war things almost all of them and also yeah i mean many ways anti-technology because i mentioned before but mostly i'm pretty sure on all the godzillas he's not actually a radioactive lizard he's awoken by it 
So yeah. It's, so it's I feel almost like it was just the American one that was just yeah that the radioactive. Or maybe thing. Shin Godzilla was as well because he was mutating as it went on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's like it's the it's sort of remnants of, of in in oh, yeah. minus one Godzilla. It's like the remnants of that the atomic bomb was like what awoken. Yes, and like created so this just, organism more awoken him. Yeah, exactly right. So it's like we've we've can, gone too far. We have we have pushed breathe. technology too far. It's just it's incredibly fascinating. Um, and just another quote from a Daily Beast article. That Godzilla has persisted for 60 years is a testament to the power of that allegory in processing the cognitive dissonance required by industrialized societies dealing with the tragic intersection of unprecedented scientific advancement and lingering ethnic supremacism. That's Rich Goldstein. So just a fascinating thing to kind of pass. There's, just, there's so much going on in these kaiju shows. You know, it's just there's so much happening in them and there's so many historical religious themes being thrown around also the fact that just so much of it is just parts of it taken and dispersed amongst cultural products you know it's it's really really interesting because yeah you no one would ever actually sit there with a straight face and call attack on titan a kaiju mecha show but you can also be hard to argue against it too. Mm. You know, no, straight up is. Yeah. So yeah, it really is. It's just you, you go on Mal or IMDb, it's not going to say any of those words, yeah. but it is. It is. Well, yeah. I mean, what I mean, he activates the rumbling, which is like the fucking that is a kaiju, is literally, literally a kaiju yeah. attack. Like that is like ten million Godzillas. Just, yeah. Literally, what's happening? So yeah, yeah, that is absolutely one kaiju number eight. Really looking forward to that. It's gonna be good. I hope they do it justice. Yeah, do it justice. But also, like bring out the humor a little bit as well, because it is. Kafka is actually genuinely funny because he is the old man, mm. and he people right. let him know about that. He's the as old, well. yeah. Um, yeah, 30, I'm thirty-two-year-old the old man. That, that's, well, that's it. You're over there. That's grim, dude. That's grim. Don't be needing that in my life. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> any other kaiju shows that you want to talk about or spring to mind? Or all of them are live action. I'm thinking of like Pacific, so Rim is Pacific Rim. Is Pacific Rim is a like, pure kaiju show. Yeah. Movie. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And you're a huge Pacific Rim fan, right? I love that movie because I always, especially when I'm talking to people who watch anime, I'm like, it's it's the best live action version of an anime that doesn't exist. Mm. So Evangelion though, like it, it is, it's just they're coming from the water and not the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it is, it's a giant kaiju monster film, but you've got all the tropes of, you know, these big large in life characters, you know, Ron Perlman is a black market kaiju organ dealer old mate from the wire what's his name idris elba, idris elba plays a character called struck up uh no what does he called? static stack of pentecost like he gets you know. to be like name. ladies and gentlemen it's like the apocalypse is cancelled oh, we, like we are canceling the canceling the apocalypse they, like, they fight out of a, a an area called the shatter dome like it's got it, it all sydney different, gets destroyed uh, sydney gets comes destroyed. out of the harbor Bad not time. good. Bad time to be in the harbor. <laughs> this damn stink hole, get what, it out of here. What about like <laughs> about things some like, rent prices. Yeah, it might. What about things like the Meg? Like that big ass shark? Yeah. Yeah, I mean. It's a big ass yeah. shark. But it's not that But it's big. not destroying. It's got to destroy. It's got to be an existential threat. It can't just like. Be a friend. A, like, <laughs> like, the t- like the Sharknado. Is, but that's. <laughs> Like I mean, I guess. Like, well, that's yeah. multiple. That doesn't count because there's normal size sharks in a tornado. <laughs> no, it's a, but do they all make one giant kaiju kind of amorphous thing? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Let's not bring Sharknado good. into this. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> not desecrate this podcast with such filth. <laughs> Sharknado would be a great anime. Actually, that's very true. There probably is one in the works. That is very, very true. Mappa's got it. <laughs> Mappa's yeah, got it. 15 projects yeah. for the season alone. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, no, Pacific Rim, it felt like it got a bad rap at the time. It didn't feel like it got to like, love it. I think people missed the point a little bit, didn't they? I think they did. It's a cult classic. It is a cult classic. It, is, it, is, classic. Uh, yeah. it is just got some wonderful moments where he's like, we're going to punch this guy in the face, engage the rocket elbows. And I'm like, yes, yeah. the rocket elbows. And then they, I think people get lost in that because the, the system they use to pilot the Jaegers, mm. which are the mechs in it, it's, it's all about being drift compatible. Mm. So you have to be compatible with your partner yes. and you have to sort of meld minds with that. And I think it's a that, classic thing in Mecha, yeah. I think for an anime fan, that's like, oh, of course, that's how you do it. But I think for just normal movie goers, like, I don't... What is this? this yeah. you know? And it's Guillermo del Toro. Like, yeah. The man can shoot a movie. He can present giant monsters as giant monsters. Mm-hmm. Like, and nothing feels small. Everyone feels like larger in life. It's It's 
It's it's a great movie. I, think I, need to re- I haven't watched it since like 2012 when it came out. And I, like, I really liked movie. it, but a lot of people. I remember it was a, it was a bit of a bomb, wasn't it? Like it didn't go. I don't think it did well. It, it did well enough it was, to get a sequel. Yeah, but as a pure piece of unique IP to come out in the last like 15 years before Mar- everything was Marvel, like it's fantastic. And, and if you're an anime fan, go watch it. Like it's fantastic. Yeah. Is the BFG a misunderstood kaiju? <laughs> but it's the little one. He's the smallest of them. He's the smallest of them. He's still big enough to step on your house. Yeah. He still has children. But he's well, like, but he's like as tall as a house. So like he struggled to step on it. You know what I mean? True. Pete's dragon. Is that a kaiju? Hmm. I mean, not all monsters are kaiju though, right? Like, <laughs> we're getting into the reads here. You have to be giant. You got to be giant. Well, well again, like Godzilla. It can change. Well, Godzilla, if, if we want to have the die kaiju, but a kaijin, of course, is like a monster person hybrid. Well, now we're starting to get like a drug could be fucking anything. There's tons of tons of things which are kaijin, monster people. Attack of the Giant Ants. That was a movie. <laughs> yeah. That's, that, that's that's like a radioactive Cold War s- scare that's it. bomb movie. That wasn't The Sims. Well, that's shit. I mean, there must be some freaks. I was going to say fucking, giant spiders. Yeah. That's a whole thing. That's sort of elements of kaiju for sure. Is that your worst nightmare? Yes. Movie? Fuck that film. Um, eight legged freaks. Yeah, well, arachnophobia is worse, but I can't be doing yeah. it. Um, eight legged freaks is funny. It's yeah, ridiculous. It's so, and the CGI is so bad. Yeah. The scariest giant spider is definitely Lord of the Rings. Yeah, horrifying. That's a terrifying spider. Shelob. She's absolutely terrifying. Shelob. She's genuinely terrifying. Yeah, no, that's yeah. fucked. Um, I, guess I have to. <laughs> Harry Potter as well. You've never finished Lord of the Rings. No, I'm like, get up from my That's me out. You don't no. know what happened at the no. end. <laughs> Did they destroy it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did they make it? What happened? <laughs> How'd that Gollum what? fellow go? Yeah. <laughs> How's he like, going? Uh, anything that has like a medieval movie with a, a dragon. Are we talking kaiju there? Like no. attacking villages? I think it has to like, I think it has to be really, real big. That's my take on it. Yeah, yeah, A yeah. real big dragon. Yeah. yeah. It's, and generally dragons like tend to keep to themselves too by nature, like in their lore. You know like what I mean? That they, they protect their gold and their mountains. People go yeah. hunt them. You know, they don't tend to, and if they do come down, it's a rarity, you know, to destroy a town or whatever. It happens in lots of storytelling, but yeah. I mean, basically, Japanese post World War II stories about giant monsters, existential threats, allegories, and all allegories of that. Allegories for all the various things which happened in their history, and especially more modern history. Uh, that's Kaiju. And again, not that many we see purely in anime until this year. We're very excited about that. We got one. We got one. But of course, like I said, so many elements. Neon Genesis, Attack on yeah. Titan. They're all, it's it's littered little bits throughout so much Japanese media and anime and manga, obviously. And as you said, we could have done like a literal history podcast on this episode. And Absolutely. Get into the reads of it. But as we're kind of just wanting to talk about shows that have this influence and what you should watch and honestly like... There's not as many as you think there would be, which is I find fascinating for anime. But yeah. uh, we've obviously got one coming up, which is exciting. It's gonna be good, indeed. And there's yeah. probably ones we've missed. So please yell at me in the comments. Yeah, yeah. tell us what we've missed, obviously. And like, and I can't watch think it. of any. This is wild. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's so many elements, as we were saying. Like, yeah. There's so elements many. everywhere. But yeah, Evangelion is massive one. Absolutely. I'd argue Titan, obviously. Yeah. The show yeah. that's called Kaiju. Kaiju. Eight, yeah. Um. Hundred percent. The Godzilla anime. Of course, but and also the reason we didn't dive too deep into the reads and the history is that like as much as it's fascinating and interesting, we're not a history podcast and you could actually go and l- do a, s- a whole series mm-hmm. on the cultural impact of kaiju anime and what it means historically and spiritually to Japan, but it's not our place to say that. So uh, we've littered in bits and pieces and you know you can't not talk about it because it's incredibly fascinating, but if you're wondering why it's a bit light on there, we sort of decided it's not. It's not, it's not our show. Sorry to tell. Uh, as much as I'd like to dive, dive deeper, it's, you know, we've done enough, I think, and um, fascinating stuff. So basically. Definitely go see Godzilla if you can. Um, yeah. There's actually a Godzilla vs. Kong movie coming out, but it's Another Hollywood. Yes. Um, it's Hollywood. Don't watch Hollywood. the Godzilla movie with Matthew Broderick. Garbage. Because you'll then think that Godzilla's bad. It's got a good soundtrack, though. True. Yeah. Was it Puff Daddy? Yeah. Yeah. Drew Carey. Deeper on the ground. Maraquai. I've got, like, in my head, Drew Carey. Drew Carey? As a Drew paparazzi. Carey. Yeah. He like goes to take a picture of Godzilla and he's like, oh, no, and then he that's, dies. That's the guy who's from The Simpsons. What's his name? Phil Hartman. No. Hank Azaria? Hank Azaria. Are you sure it's not Drew Carey? It's not Drew Carey. I think it's Drew Hank Carey. Azaria. I'm almost certain that Drew Carey plays the paparazzi no. in Godzilla. I'm doing no. the best. I am I'm straight, straight up right certain. Now. <laughs> no, I, and wrong. I don't know why. I'm, and if my brain has just put him there. 
Look how Drew, <laughs> look how Drew Carey Godzilla. I think you're thinking of Newman from Jurassic Park. <laughs> you think that's right? What's his I name? I mean, yeah. Um, Thingy Knight. Um, oh, there was an Aaron Taylor Johnson, Elizabeth Olsen Godzilla in 2014 yeah, as well. Hank Azaria winds a big tap for uh, Graham so far. He's just looking at Drew Carey. <laughs> He just went to the premiere. (laughs) (laughs) I just went to the premiere. It's so weird. It's just him and his girlfriend at the premiere of Godzilla. (laughs) Sorry, this is the most chaotic. Okay. So, guys, it turns out Drew Carey is not in Godzilla. Yeah, he watched and it once. This is my Mandela moment, which no one else has had. No one else has had. (laughs) This and EDM. EDM. Straight up is Hank Azaria, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They don't look anything alike. No, nope. they could not <laughs> be closer away. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, so Gary. All right, I've embarrassed myself enough on this podcast. Um, all right, we'll wrap it up. We'll wrap it up. Oh yeah, my god, my lord. Well, thank you all so much for listening. Really appreciate it. Hey, if you're a podcast listener, please head over to Spotify and or Apple Podcasts. Leave us a five star review or write a little one on Apple if you feel so inclined. It really really does help us of course you can find us on all of our social media platforms instagram tiktok and youtube which hopefully you are watching us on also you can find us on our website www.gatewaytoanime.com and if you really like what we're doing join us on our patreon where fresh episode every friday we'll be doing a spin-off of this one it'll be coming out before you get early release episodes you also get behind the scenes footage so you can join for as little as one dollar fifty so head on over to patreon if you really like what we're doing helps us a lot so charlie graham thank you so much i'm gonna go listen to some edm and watch the drew carey show <laughs> <It's the only laughs> way. Whose line is it that anyway? sounds like a great That's time. A pretty sick time. night actually so anyway <laughs> absolutely recommend thanks all catch you next time